Hello everyone, and welcome to Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver 2. We are diving into the sequel almost immediately because we were left on a cliffhanger at the end of the last game. And we have music on this main menu. Listen to this. They remembered that they could put music on a main menu screen because Blood Omen and Soul Reaver were a little bit bare. I loved the atmosphere of them, but this one, we got a really nice tune. We've got Ariel's voice coming in, talking to Raziel. This is really great. 2001, two years later after the 1999 game Soul Reaver. Pretty impressive. Uh, this game came out on PlayStation 2. We are playing the PC version on uh, GOG. And uh, I believe I have a, a fix applied to the game as well, so it should be a, uh, a smooth experience for us. But I'm so excited to dive in because, like I said, we're left on a little bit of a cliffhanger. We fight Kane. He says, mm -mm -mm, this is not how this is supposed to end. The drama will unfold later and like goes into a infinity room, revealing that Mobius the time streamer still lives and we have been ensnared by destiny. Uh, the Elder can no longer assist us going into that time portal and everything is now up in the air as to what can happen. Uh, Mobius lives, Kane has escaped and Raziel is another, yet again, a pawn in the hands of fate. And it's so cool, it really is. But that to be continued cliffhanger, oh my lord. But we are apparently left with a beautiful little final paragraph about, you know, just a little tear in the fabric of time is all you need, you know? And I think that's what Raziel is for Mobius maybe. We will have to see. Let's just jump in and see what we've got to experience today. We've got the Soul Reaver as a cursor, which is amazing. Uh, we will be playing with our controller. I'm pretty sure it should all just work. It should all just work, okay? It just works. Let's start the game. Uh, let's start the game and see what happens. At last. I must say I'm disappointed in your progress. I imagined you'd be here sooner. Oh. Tell me. Did it trouble you to murder your brothers? Did it trouble you when you ordered me into the abyss? <laughs> Eternity is relentless, Raziel. When I first stole into this chamber centuries ago, I did not fathom the true power of knowledge. To know the future, Raziel. To see its paths and streams tracing out into the infinite. As a man, I could never contain such forbidden truths. But each of us is so much more than we once were. Do you not feel with all your soul how we have become like gods? As such, are we not indivisible? As long as a single one of us stands, we are legion. Our future are predestined. Mobius foretold mine eons ago. We each play out the parts fate has written for us. Free will is an illusion. I found the tomb of Saravan Cain. How could you profane a priest by turning him into a vampire? How could I not? One must keep his friends close, Raziel and his enemies even closer. Who better to serve me than those whose passion transcends all notions of good and evil? The Seraphan were saviors, defending Nazgul from the corruption that we represent. My eyes are open, Cain. I find no nobility in the unlife you rudely forced on my unwilling corpse. You may have uncovered your past, but you know nothing of it. You think the Sarafan were noble? Altruistic? Oh, 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 don't be 
was simple. Their agenda was the same as ours. Kind of different from the original. Oh, this is not where or how it ends. Fate promises more twists before this drama unfolds completely. More twists, baby. Cliffhanger. Oh wow, they recreated the fight and it plays out differently. I love it. Okay. The Soul Reaver. Oh, the Elder doesn't talk to Raziel here. Okay, there's a couple of differences between the two versions. Amazing. It was so cool to see it remade and reconstructed and also uh, re-recorded too, because there were some different, like, the voices are different. And destroyer, pawn and messiah. Welcome. Pawn and messiah. Welcome to your destiny. Okay, Mobius. Wow. So they re-recorded the lines because there's some different inflections on stuff to match the action in the scene, and that is so cool. Where am I? Is the usual question. In your case, when might be more apt. Very well, you old snake. If you'd prefer I use my bare hands, <laughs> this is completely unexpected. This orb disables our vampire enemies, leaving them helpless and incapacitated. Strangely, it seems to have the same effect on that peculiar weapon of yours. But you must believe me. I mean you no harm. You can drop the benevolent facade, Mobius. I know who and what you are. I should kill you where you stand. <laughs> Perhaps you should, my boy. But you don't. Are you so certain of that, Mobius? My role as Time Guardian affords me a certain level of omniscience, Raziel. No, you don't kill me. That honor belongs to your maker, Cain, some thirty years from now. Ah, you two are a pair. You're just as fatalistic as he is. Death comes for us all, Raziel. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Oh. How is it that you know my name? We have never met. On the contrary, Raziel. I know you very well. And it grieves me to see how cruelly Cain has used you. I knew you when you were one of the Seraphan Brotherhood, Raziel. We were even close. Oh, please. Fortunately, you need not love me now to be my ally. Are we within the stronghold of the Seraphan priesthood? Yes, but the glorious days of the Seraphan have long since passed, I'm afraid. This is a more cynical and indecorous age. My mercenary army now inhabits this stronghold. We strive to honor the memory of the Seraphan with our own humble crusade. Is this the vampire Vorador? Yes. The scourge of the circle. The most depraved and decadent example of his whole degenerate race. He slaughtered six of my fellow guardians as they cowered defenseless in this room. And you somehow survived this massacre? I and two others. The circle was devastated. Only we three were spared. How convenient. You'll forgive me if I don't naively devour every scrap of information you toss me. You have a reputation for deceit. And who has slandered me, sir? Your malefactor, Cain? The one who betrayed and destroyed you? Our common enemy? Consider the source before you judge me too harshly. We'll forget about rekindling our old friendship then. But consider an alliance based on our common ground. 
We both want Kang dead. I can help you do it. You don't want to meddle in this, old man. I know all about your sordid little schemes, but you're simply out of your depth on this one. You underestimate me, Raziel. Let me show you. Even now, Kane is lying in wait for you, unaware that I've snatched you out of the time stream and brought you here to me. See how he lingers at the very pillars he is destined to destroy, foolishly confident that he has eluded your grasp. The pillars are still standing in this time. Yes, Raziel. They are the embodiment of the divine force which preserves the life of our world. We who serve the pillars maintain their delicate balance, and Cain is destined to be the fulcrum upon which that balance turns. I believe you have already endured the wasteland wrought by his terrible, selfish decision. Cain's very existence is a cancer upon this world. As long as he lives, all of Nosgoth is in peril. You may never again be human, Raziel. But you can re-embrace the essence of your humanity and the nobility of your Seraphim heritage. Go to him, Raziel, and end this. But first, you will need to find your way out of the stronghold, and in this, I'm afraid I cannot help you. My soldiers will not understand your appearance here. They will try to kill you. You needn't fear them, of course. They're no match for you. I try to keep the casualties to a minimum. But do what you have to do. All great movements require a few martyrs. What? Okay, this is a lot now. I surveyed my surroundings and noticed a second time streaming chamber. Its entrance identical to the first, but with one distinction. That crystal was significant, but how, I had not yet discovered. Oh, and we're in. Okay, we're in. Um, this game wastes, this game wastes no time, dude. This game wastes no time. Okay. Uh, just need to get a feel for the controls. Okay, that's the same. Oh man. Oh, hang on. Oh, I've got a I've got like a block. Amazing. Okay. I'll see how I feel about my arrangement with my controls. I might change them around. We can view the map. Oh, we have a world map again. Amazing. Okay. That noise is annoying. We have a world map again. Amazing. So, we're kind of back in time, but also we've got like this sanctuary to where Vorador committed his grave axe, you know, as we know. Um, but the pillars are still standing, so we've gone, we've gone back in time. But I'm still like this, unfortunately. I guess this is Varador and all the members of the circle that he's killed. Oh, this is a lot to process. Like, oh, okay. The game wastes no time. The, there's no brakes on this train, except for the brakes that I'm currently applying to process this. But Mobius is full on being like Palpatine right now. Amazing. Kane's just chilling at the at the pillars, thinking that he's he's safe from me, but he is not. Um, I don't have a I don't have a pause menu. I can okay. Oh, Dark Chronicle. And I need to configure my controls. I think because I don't have um I don't have like a pause. Oh, there's, there's so many more. Okay, so there's a action and a heavy attack. There's so many more controls here. 
So I can press escape to get this pause menu, but I can't press it on my gamepad, I guess. So I suppose I'll just have to live with that. Um, but that should be fine. Uh, we just have a set volume button, just, and it's at 20, which is such a weird number. And you can have sound or music on, but no different things. Dark Chronicle, Prologue and Arrival. Oh, cool. It's a, it's a text-based catch-up on everything that's happened. Raziel has just leapt through the chronoplast portal in pursuit of Cain, fueled by blind rage and a thirst for vengeance. As his surroundings coalesce, he finds himself in a domed room, similar to the chronoplast chamber, but smaller in scale. Now, this is great because Ariel gave him this warning. You know, if you're fueled by blind rage, you will be ensnared by destiny. And that's what happened. He pursued Cain. And now we find ourselves in this situation. Um, so Mobius wants to ally with us and, uh, he, I mean, he can, he's welcome to try, but we'll see. We, we, we also know about him being, um, you know, not a very good guy. <laughs> God, the artwork on these walls is incredible. What an amazing opening. I just, we're processing it, taking it in. So we've got a time streaming room with a crystal. The controls are just a little bit different. So I'm going to have to get used to that. So we find ourselves in the tomb of the Seraphan. So I, I don't have my Soul Reaver anymore. And I don't think I have any of my abilities. I just have the ability to... We still have the ability to shift. So I think that this is the door. This is where we came from. Interesting. So Mobius plucked us out of time, but I wonder where Kane. I guess Kane was supposed to end up somewhere else, and then we were supposed to follow him, but Mobius was just like, I will take you for myself. And that's sort of where we're at. Alright, shall we get a taste of combat? We get two types of attacks. We get a normal attack and a, and a heavy attack. There it is. There it is. We can block. Oh, look at that. Taste my blade, oh, hang on. I don't know what the auto face command is. Oh, there it is. Then jump to dodge. Oh, I got it. There it is. Okay. Oh, I've got his blade now. Cool. Okay, so similar similar mechanics. So they just think I'm a vampire. Amazing. What the fuck? Bounced. Oh! Decapitation! Cool. Holy shit. I love that it just feels so natural of a continuation between the first game and this one. Like, outside, you know, outside of the fact that obviously there's been a very clear upgrade in the past couple of years. Uh, amazing. It wastes no time. Oh, 
you just know that like they're like we ran out of time on the first game so we just immediately get to work on the second one you know we ship that game and then we put all of our resources into this one and just keep it going i love it there was someone here i could see you through the wall oh Oh my god, the decapitations are free! They love giving them out. Throughout the stronghold, I discovered evidence of my former nobility my life as a Saravan priest. This was the heritage so foully stolen from me when Cain raided my sacred crypt and defiled me. Oh, the head's on spikes! Dude. Who put these here and why? Oh. Casualties to a minimum, but you must kill them to progress. Fucking hell. Alright, well, it's a beautiful day outside. Beautiful day to be in my Sarafan sanctuary. Uh, is this where we came from? I think so. We walked out here. I love having the camera control, uh, camera control on my thumbstick. That is very nice. where I came from. No, this is where we definitely where we came from. Oh haha, -ha, you know what I you know what we have to do? We gotta tap into our old powers. That makes sense. There's a gate, huh? And I can't get through the gate? Well Guess what? I know what we must do. Alright, this is our first shift. Oh, I still have the... Oh, I still have the Soul Reaver. When I'm in um, the Spirit Realm. Oh god, look at these. Oh, that's so cool. Cool. Alright, so I still have the Soul Reaver. I thought it was taken from me because Mobius absorbed it into his cool looking stuff. Yes, alright, we still have that, that ability, which means if we still have that, we still have the ability to swim, to climb walls, and such and such, right? Away from the influence of Mobius's cursed staff, oh, okay. I could feel the strength of the Soul Reaver slowly returning. 
If that orb was as debilitating to vampires as it was to the blade, it gave Mobius a powerful advantage over his enemies. I finally understood how Mobius's crusade could decimate the vampires so successfully. If he could immobilize his enemies, they were at his mercy. But why, I wondered, would the staff have any effect on the Reaver? Um... Why indeed, I suppose. It's, it's got some sort of vampiric connection. Prepare to die. Yep, okay. Oh, you can do a finishing move with your... Yes, you don't need a weapon. That's a good quality of life improvement. Thank God. Oh! Jesus! Oh, I dodged into you. Amazing. Alright. But you don't get your Soul Reaver back, I guess, un until you turn into spirit mode, I suppose. Turning into uh, spirit, uh, going to the spirit mode um, does take your health away. It didn't in the original when you transformed, but I guess it has a cost now. Oh! Just an immediate disintegration. They're just gone. Cool. Every encounter feels like such a cool little dance of uh, them dodging and them doing their own power-up attacks and stuff. Really cool. Okay, well that gate's closed with a door. So... We'll go this way. As I neared the stronghold's inner sanctum, a strange sensation crept over me. An indescribable feeling of displacement, a sense of vertigo, as reality itself appeared to warp and bend around me. The disturbance seemed to emanate from the sanctuary's furthest chapel. As I cautiously approached, the sense of dislocation intensified with each step. So this was the tomb of the beloved King William the Just, beatified here as the martyr and catalyst of Mobius's crusade. I was reminded of Cain's journey as a fledgling vampire. How Mobius coerced him to travel back in history and assassinate William, thus igniting a genocidal hatred of vampires among the citizens of Nosgoth. And here I discovered the source of the displacement. The Soul Reaver itself, laid out like a holy relic, and broken, apparently in the battle between William and Cain. I had not thought such a thing was possible. Until, of course, Cain shattered the blade against me when he tried to strike me down. Thus, the captive spirit inhabiting the Reaver was released, and binding itself to me, became my symbiotic weapon. And so the Reaver met its former self, still imprisoned in this corporeal shell. I watched, mesmerized as the Wraith Blade uncoiled itself and snaked down the length of the physical blade. Embracing its twin, its mirror self, the Reaver's long dormant spirit was now fully aroused. And for the first time, I felt the true presence of this other entity, willful, ravenous, and deranged from thousands of years of imprisonment. The Reaver was now in command, and I, now merely its helpless host, 
felt my soul being leeched to restore the blade. But the Reaver knew better than to destroy its host, and just as I neared the brink of oblivion, the blade released its hold on me. As I recovered, I realized we were now bound together in a fragile alliance, the Reaver no longer merely my symbiotic weapon, but a sentient parasite competing for control. What have you done to me, Mobius? Is this your trap? How mine? Don't forget it was Cain who led you here, not I. While you curse me, the only soul in Nosgoth ready to guide and assist you, Cain laughs at our folly and revels in your dismay. These blades, now coiled in sinister embrace, have inspired terror in the hearts of creatures far more durable than you, old man. Bound together as they are, I can only imagine what they could do to your soul's fragile shell. Raziel, I beg you to stay your hand. This was none of my doing. I have sought only to aid you in your righteous quest. Why, you're trembling, Mobius. Has your confidence abandoned you? You seem to have made a fatal error by leaving your precious staff behind. Is that where all your courage comes from? Listen to me, Raziel. You don't know what you're doing. I have taken an enormous risk by appearing here before you, so defenseless. Yet eager to prove my good intentions. If there's anything left of the Seraphim in you, you won't do this. While you threaten me, your true enemy eludes you. Don't concern yourself with Cain, old man. He'll join you in hell soon enough. As you said, death comes for us all. Yes, the wheel of fate demands it. What did you say? The wheel of fate. The inexorable cycle of death and rebirth to which all men are compelled. We serve the same God, Raziel. To strike me down would be striking God's own attendant. And I don't believe even you would take that risk. I tire of your games, Mobius. Now that I know you fear me, I needn't concern myself with you. Cain is waiting for me. Go then, Raziel. Seek Cain out and destroy him in the name of the one God we both serve. You, who were once a seraphim priest, murdered, profaned, destroyed, and reborn again from his mercy. You are now most powerfully equipped to be his agent, his instrument of restoration and retribution. My own vengeance is motivation enough. By my soul, you almost had me, my little blue assassin. But that'll be the one and only chance you get. I assure you of that. I could now summon the blade at will, regardless of my strength. But once summoned, the blade's ravenous appetite could not be contained. It devoured the souls of its victims. And if I allowed it to become over-aroused, the Reaver would now turn its hunger on me. Oh boy! Oh, my health just disappeared. Amazing. Awesome. Look at all that health I had and it's been drained. Okay. Can we just, can we just think about this? Because, holy shit. Like, the, the writing of this script. Like, the writing here is exceptional. This is amazing. And I love that it's bringing in the the Blood Omen lore as well and the storylines that's happened there with Cain being manipulated by Mobius to go and, like, change the course of history, you know? It starts off with, you know, Cain being just this guy that gets killed by a group of bandits and then Mortanius goes, ho, ho, ho go and do this stuff. And then Mobius 
also plays a part in, hey, go and do this. And it's just like, then you get to the pillars and, it's, and then Mortanius is like, hey, I'm, a, I'm actually <laughs> just using you too. And it's just a pawn in the game. And it's so clear that obviously Mobius is still being like an evil Palpatine here. Um, and he's, he's like feeding Raziel's ego. He's like, oh no, I'm so weak. Don't kill me. And then, you know, he's being smart and he's like, we serve the same God. You can't kill me. All of that amazing stuff. Uh, seeing that, like, we've got like so many cool things that this relates to. We've got our shards of Narsil, the Soul Reaver from in Lord of the Rings, and we've reforged the blade. <laughs> And now it's like a symbiote, like Venom, and it's like sapping our own existence, but keeping us alive. And now we're in like this constant battle with it for, um, for control. So the spirit has like doubled itself, me like meeting the original spirit still trapped in the blade. We are rousing that spirit. I just love the true presence of this other entity, willful, ravenous, and deranged from thousands of years of imprisonment. I love the way that we can go back and see it written because there's no subtitles in the game. But it's how weird is it, right, that there's no subtitles in the game and yet it's all written here. I guess they just couldn't code subtitles for some reason. So cool. What an incredible scene. Actually, every single scene so far and we're just at the start of the game i have played for 30 minutes <laughs> and my mind is blown this is like two games worth of like setting the stage and now they're just firing on all cannons right everything firing on all cylinders it's all just like paying off now blood omen law soul reaver law blending it together us being able to like have a look this at all. was the legendary Janos Ordrin, reputed to have been the most ancient and diabolical vampire to have ever existed. According to folklore, he lived high in the cliffs of Nosgoth's northern mountains and preyed mercilessly on the defenseless villages below. His reign of terror ended when the Saraphan finally hunted him down and tore his throbbing heart from his still living body. This relic came to be known as the Heart of Darkness, and was supposedly imbued with the power to restore vampiric unlife. The Seraphim therefore guarded it carefully, lest the heart fall into the hands of their enemies. But I wondered, could Janos Ordrin truly have been as monstrous as depicted here? Or was this merely artistic license by the Seraphim, who sought to lionize themselves by demonizing their darkest enemy? Oh my god. We are feasting on this dialogue. It's unbelievably well written. It's so good. Holy shit. The heart of darkness. Oh my god. And we're just, just getting so much like lore as well. And I just love the way that they're taking the events of Soul Reaver and uh, the story and history of Blood Omen and just blending it together so nicely. I wonder if this stuff is like, if we can, do we still have the constrict power? doesn't look like it, or it just doesn't work on that. It's so cool to see the, the weapons locked in combat like that. And the Shattered Soul Reaver Blade, because we're getting, I guess, a, a decent catch-up of uh, information from Blood Omen as well, I guess, and the events that took place. So my soul is co is constantly being drained. We can summon the blade at will. Oh, there it is. So you press circle. Oh, there's another meter. Interesting. Okay, there you go. You can activate it and put it away. That's that button. Yeah, and if you shift, you still have the blade. Let's go this way. Oh, right. I can't open doors. I'm, 
I'm very blown away. Like, immediately just absolutely hooked. Which was not hard anyway. Like, I already really loved the previous two games, but this is just elevating it to a whole other level. Taste my blade, vampire! No, I'm not a vampire. I'm keeping casualties to an apparent minimum. Strange how my history came full circle. Whoa. This chapel, I realized, was a memorial to my former Saraphan brethren and myself. All of us martyred here. And then so cruelly profaned by Cain when he imposed his gift on our noble corpses. For the first time, I beheld the image of my Seraphan self, memorialized here among my fallen comrades. It tortured me to see how noble and pure I had been, and what a vile phantasm I had become and a profound sense of injury, of loss and betrayal, welled up in me, so overwhelming I could barely contain it. All I wanted at this moment was to find Cain and destroy him. Dude. So you gotta be careful. Where'd the souls go? Oh, did I autom do I automatically absorb the souls, maybe? If it's killed with the soul reaver? Why don't I get cool artwork? I have a statue. Wow. Also, something that's really interesting as well is in Soul Reaver, we defeat Melkaya, Zephon, Rahab. But not Terrell. Who is this? Like, we don't... We don't know who Terrell is. He's one of our brothers, but he was not around in Soul Reaver. Very interesting. Yeah, Zephon, Dumar, Rahab... And uh, Melkaya, we defeated, and then Terrell, we did not. And we have a statue instead of a um, instead of a cool piece of artwork. Interesting. I guess this is the game's way of making the weapons in the world more useful with still having the Soul Reaver, is the Soul Reaver obviously exerts a cost. My life force constantly draining is not nice. Might go and check through this door first. go through that. Can we save anywhere? It just says resume. Um, we were able to save the game. Whenever we wanted in the in the first one. I'm not sure how saving works in this game. It might be similar to Blood Omen, maybe? You have to find an actual save point. We were also playing Soul Reaver on uh, an emulator, so we were able to use save states, so that kind of helped us tremendously as well. 
So none of that uh, today. I guess we'll push on and maybe we'll see if there's like a checkpoint system or auto saves or a save point. glory. The land overflowed with abundant life and vitality. And I knew with certainty then that the world I had left behind was nothing more than the corpse of Nosgoth, a lifeless husk bled dry by the corruption of Cain's parasitic empire. This was the fragile world Cain sacrificed to preserve his own petty life and ambition, heedless of the profound cost. The sight only deepened my resolve. I sensed that the pillars lay to the northwest, and if Cain truly waited to confront me there, I would not disappoint him. So I guess Ariel would still be... Oh, music change. Ariel would still be there, but like, it's Ariel in the past, but maybe because Ariel is like some sort of transcendental spirit an entity, maybe that she's, uh, she'll be aware of us still. She'll be like, oh, I know you from a different time. Who knows? Um, looks like we want to go over there. I'm assuming we have the ability to swim based on our abilities from the previous game. We can still do this. I'm assuming that we can swim. Yes. All right, we got swimming. Do we attack underwater? No. Oh, I just realized we don't have our projectile attack anymore. Because that's that was our one attack underwater. Um can I jump out of water like I used to be able to? Doesn't look like it. We used to be able to like high jump out of water. That might not be possible anymore. crouch and press jump okay no we can okay we can do it as i pass this arcane landmark a wisp of the reaver's energy was drawn into the ring illuminating it this created a beacon of sorts in the spirit world if ever i found myself depleted in the spectral realm and my soul tossed on the ethereal winds these beacons would draw me back to safety and restore me okay so we got lower checkpoints can this also be where we save? I'm not sure. Let's go over this side then. Let's see what's going on here. So we've got lore related checkpoints. Yeah, I definitely don't know if the game will uh, auto save or not. Go up, please. I did not yet possess the means to unlock this barrier, but this enigmatic symbol was clearly the key. Okay, something to do with that symbol to open that door, gotcha.
going for another swim, baby. That'll go somewhere. I wonder what these... Okay, I'm seeing a lot of these pots. And I'm, I'm not sure what they're for. I'm assuming the game will tell me at some point. It's done a pretty decent job at telling me most things. Maybe it just needs to come up at some point, or I don't have an ability related to it yet. No, up, please. Stop going down. These ancient obelisks were mysteriously attuned to my spiritual essence. By simply touching the symbol, I could safely preserve an imprint of my soul, and thus create a milestone to which I could return when weary, and from which I could resume my journey. I love the way that they putting checkpoints and save points in a lore safe sense, like it fits within the world. It's amazing. Okay, there you go. Save game. Game data saved. You have to use a mix of your controller and the mouse sometimes. All right. Confirmed save points like Blood Omen. There you go. It's that crystal thing again. Okay. Well, at least we have confirmation with save points, so that'll be something to take note of. Don't just randomly quit the game. <laughs> We still have high jump. I had only just escaped the stronghold. I sensed that in time my journey would return me full circle to this place. Infiltrating the fortress, however, would be no small feat. The balcony that had provided my escape was now well beyond my reach, leaving this massive gateway as the only means of entry. The gates were sealed, but like the time streaming chamber I had seen earlier, their operation was undoubtedly linked to that odd crystal mounted above the entrance. I love how this game is able to sort of communicate your surroundings. Uh, it does a really good job at not making you feel very, like, lost or overwhelmed. Blood Omen is a lot of sort of just, like, walking around. It Like, the good thing is that game goes, go here, and you can go straight there, or you can go walk through all the fields and towns and everything. Soul Reaver is a lot of exploration and puzzle solving with environmental traversal and being able to shift between the planes. And this game is as nice. I really appreciate the sort of, I'm here, I can't go here, I'll probably come back here. And the way that it's also explaining how things work, I, I appreciate it. Take, uh, down. Take the beast down. Oh God. Ha! Ha! take you down and take your weapon with me this is a very beautiful looking game too love the attack interruptions Jesus, I noticed that way too late. They've got guns! Whatever that is. What's he launching at me? Jesus. <clears throat> He's shooting pellets at me. God, the, all the bodies on spikes, so brutal. Oops. Oh God, I'm being brutalized. 
Oh, you do automatically get the soul. I don't think I get the health when I destroy them with the Soul Reaver, actually. That bar goes up like crazy. Oh, I love all the different moves. Oh. And I'll need to get used to dodging in the correct uh, direction instead of pushing forward and just dodging into them. Oh, the birds. Such a good quality of life change to be able to kill them with your bare hands. Like, it makes sense. Oh. Birds vanish, okay. God, could you imagine if Soul Reaver 1 and 2 were just like remade into one game? Because I feel like that should be the case. No to be continued, like no cliffhanger with your, your short little game for Soul Reaver 1. Remake Soul Reaver into just one game. I think that would be amazing. And just have it just continue. So weird seeing the birds just sort of fade. I feel like that's a- oh shit. What the fuck is that? I feel like that's a really great way to like, um, have like birds fly away, but like instead of them just disappearing and it being like an immersion breaking experience, they're magical birds that dissipate instead. I wonder, I don't know if we still have the ability to like pick up enemies in the way that we used to. Like you could pick them up and throw them and impale them on things. Oh God. Also something to think about is obviously our enemies in Soul Reaver were all sort of vampires and monsters and wraiths and all of that sort of stuff. But we've gone back again, you know, so we've got humans roaming around much more. And also, um, Mobius is, Mobius has his own little army. Much different. What's going on here? We got like, it's, I, I wouldn't say necessarily scales, but potentially scales? But I can't interact with it. Oh, hang on. Hmm, okay, that doesn't shift or change anything, actually. I was expecting that to maybe, like, maybe it would move. I love how much more creepy the spirit realm is. And I guess I can see wherever, whenever I want where we are on the map, too. So we're getting close to the pillars. I like that it doesn't show you where everything is, like the Blood Omen map does. Blood Omen's like, here's everything. Try to, of, I guess, avoid combat if you don't need to. if I need health or something. Oh, God. The, oh, all this when I'm getting eaten by a dog. Okay, this is a challenging combination. 
What is that noise? When they when they die. What are these? Checkpointed. <clears throat> you just be like, guys, come on, I'm not a vampire. If I was a vampire, could I do this? And then I'll go for a swim. And they'll be like, <gasps> this music gives me uh, Jack and Daxter vibes when you're sneaking around like a facility in Jack 2. See, some of them look different. These vampires had nothing in... <laughs> Still just standing there. ...jackals I left behind in Kane's derelict empire. They seem to retain much of their former humanity. In this era... Vampires were clearly not the uncontested predators we had been. These creatures were hunted mercilessly and oppressed. And while I still believed that vampirism was a plague and had to be wiped out, there was nothing noble or righteous in this crusade. This was simply ruthless persecution. Ah, it's just fucking that dude just fucking next to me the whole time while I'm just chatting shit. Um, so I'm assuming that this is like the era and that like time period where like obviously Cain has killed William um, as it was shown before and then Mobius uses that as ammo to like rally the people against vampires and we're just we're just living in that time period and that era now of like Mobius and his little army I suppose against vampire kind. Okay, what did that do? Oh, oh, if I could stop dodging into you, that would be great. Um, I operated it, but... Do I need to hold it? Oh, I do need to, yep. Proper hold it. There you go. There you go. That's what you needed to do, lad. <laughs> I love that animation. Kick it open the door like that. The pillars of Nosgoth. Pristine, whole, and uncorrupted. I had never beheld them in this undefiled state. Yet something profound and indelible resonated within me at the sight. And there, waiting at the very heart of the pillars, was the canker that was destined to destroy them. Cain! I know you're there, Raziel. Mobius led me to you, Cain. Though I might have guessed you'd meet me here. And if Mobius told you I was hidden on the underside of hell, would you throw yourself into oblivion to pursue me? Mobius trawls for the ignorant and unwary, hauling his gasping prey from the streams of their destinies. Stay out of his net, Raziel. Spare me your elaborate metaphors, Cain. I have pursued you here for one purpose. You will pay for your betrayal, and balance will thus be restored to Nosgoth. And whose will is satisfied then? The will of Raziel or Mobius? Would I be better manipulated by you, Cain? Now, turn and face me. The chase is over. This isn't a chase, Raziel. We are merely passengers on the wheel of destiny, describing a perfect circle to this point. We've been brought here for a reason. I've seen the beginning and the end of our story, however, and the tale is crude and ill-conceived. We must rewrite the ending of it. You and I. Face me, Cain. Even you shouldn't die a coward's death. Isn't it customary to grant the condemned a final request? 
I recall no such courtesy from you. Indulge me, Raziel. All I ask is that you listen. This is the sublime moment of our undoing, Raziel. The ineffable fulcrum upon which swings the entirety of our history. This is where all of Nosgoth is betrayed. In this instant, Ariel, the Balance Guardian, is murdered by dark forces bent on overthrowing the pillars. Her spirit is just now tearing free, lost in the ether, trying to find its way here. You have already seen how she comes to haunt these pillars. Bound here by your refusal to die, you are the reason this land becomes diseased. As long as you remain alive, you condemn Nosgoth to an eternity of decay. Be still, Raziel. See this. As Ariel dies, I am being born to take her place as Balance Guardian. Such is my destiny. At the moment of my first cry, Ariel's beloved, the Guardian Nupraptor, finds her corpse. Racked with grief and tormented by suspicions of treachery, Nupraptor plunges into a madness which overflows and infects all of the Guardians who are symbiotically bound, including me. The repercussions of Ariel's assassination were expertly calculated. The entire circle descends into madness, and I am tainted at the moment of my birth, instantly rendered incapable of fulfilling the role destiny has prepared for me. Shall I show you the same mercy you showed the rest of the circle, then? You blithely murdered them to restore their pillars, yet your hand faltered when it came to the final sacrifice. What makes you exempt, Cain? You're merely the last man standing. Why condemn me? for simply carrying out what you hadn't the courage to do yourself. Let's drop the moral posturing, shall we? We both know there's no altruism in this pursuit. Your reckless indignation led you here. I counted on it. There's no shame in it, Raziel. Revenge is motivation enough. At least it's honest. Hate me, but do it honestly. Thirty years hence, I am presented with a dilemma. Let's call it a two-sided coin. If the coin falls one way, I sacrifice myself and thus restore the pillars. But as the last surviving vampire in Nosgoth, this would mean the annihilation of our species. Mobius made sure of that. If the coin lands on the reverse, I refuse the sacrifice and thus doom the pillars to an eternity of collapse. Either way, the game is rigged. We agree then that the pillars are crucial and must be restored. Yes, Raziel. And that's why we've come full circle to this place. So after all this, you make my case for me. To end this stalemate, you must die so that new guardians can be born. Pillars don't belong to them, Raziel. They belong to us. Your arrogance is boundless, Cain. <laughs> There's a third option. A monumental secret hidden in your very presence here. But it's a secret you have to discover for yourself. Unearth your destiny, Raziel. It's all laid out for you here. You said it yourself, Cain. There are only two sides to your coin. Apparently so. But suppose you throw a coin enough times. Suppose one day, it lands on its edge. Oh my god, that's so cool. Fucking hell. And I love, <clears throat> what I love about that is he's talking about being the guardian of balance and he's talking about the coin landing on its edge between the two sides. Oh my God, it's it's just like, oh, it's so satisfying to listen to, but it's so much larger than I can even comprehend right now. <clears throat> and then he's like, ha there's a secret. You gotta figure it out. Oh, it's so insane. I love it. I love it so much. The full circle nature of let's go back to the beginning 
because this is the this is that scene from the beginning of Blood Omen where we witness the pillar's corruption. And I just I love that it's taking us back to the beginning, but with new context and with so much happening. It just makes me so curious as to how the hell they're going to pull this off. Uh, I, I, I think it's I think it's incredible. That's the shift symbol on these things. No, know what impulse stayed my hand. Why I had so willingly allowed Cain to escape me when I had pursued him for so long. I had no reason to trust Cain after he had valued me so little. And yet, I found myself intrigued by his words. I had been too cruelly used to so gullibly play his pawn. But if this world truly had secrets to divulge, I was determined to expose them. Very cool. Every time I want to talk about the stuff, I walk forward and uh, <laughs> it's like time to talk about things. Uh, but what an amazing sequence. Being at the Pillars of Nosgoth and they're fucking tall. <laughs> Look at that shit. It's all. So Ariel is not yet here, but she will be. How cool. Um, this looks like a wall climbing situation. But I guess if we go to spectral, it'll change. Oh, nice. I love that. This is such a cool mechanic. Getting your brain um, brain wrinkles in when you're like, oh, I need to shift between the planes. I always love how that clicks in the first game as well. Oh shit! There are there are wraiths, and they've got sp spirit blood. Oh fuck! Uh, not wraiths, sorry, because wraiths are the other ones. But you know what I mean. Like, if there are still enemies. Oh, look at them! Love that sound effect. So cool. Require a save point, please. There's a checkpoint, but not a save point. From the moment of my arrival, I had the constant and palpable sensation of being watched. Someone, it seemed, was keenly interested in my presence here. I think, yeah, that's got to be the deal with the birds, how they kind of just... Yeah. Who do they belong to, though? Like, I probably should know with how much we've played of Blood Omen that it's probably tied to one of the... one of the nine. One of the Guardians of the Pillars. Mayhap. Oh. Is that me? From the look of it, this door had been sealed for centuries. I began to realize it was no mere coincidence that I found myself standing here beneath this winged figure with blue skin and cloven hands so like my own, and bearing this unique key. Yeah, insert the Soul Reaver. Wow, that imagery is so cool. So we don't get our own artwork in the Seraphan tomb, but we do get one of these. And so it was with a sense of gravity and trepidation that I unsealed that ancient door and crossed the threshold. <laughs> Cross to the threshold, okay. God damn. So cool. And another thing I really appreciate about, appreciate about this game is um, compared to Soul Reaver 1, you do a lot of just kind of walking around in silence and figuring stuff out, but then you get rewarded with some amazing cutscenes and dialogue at certain points, like with like the bosses and stuff. But this game is treating us so much more because we're having constant moments where Raziel is like narrating his own experiences, good dialogue as well, and then character interactions. Just like Blood Omen had a lot of sort of like Kane self-narrating things, which I really loved. Like when you would walk over those markers and he would talk about stuff like it was so engaging. Uh, whenever I would see one of those, I would get so excited because I'm like, cool, I'm about to hear Kane talk about something. And it was it was great. Like you get so excited for the dialogue, like what's going to come next. And this game is back to sort of re rewarding us with that more regularly. Soul Reaver was sort of 
lacking in that it only saved it for like the cutscenes. So this is what I want. Let us cross the threshold. I think those are souls. Nope, they just disappear. Okay. The music is so good. That feels dangerous. I don't think we want to. I don't think we want to go in there. It's steamy. It feels like acid. I'm gonna say avoid it. Fellows, I'm leaving. The music is so good. I love it. Really nailing that sort of ancient mystery. Wait. As I entered the chamber, I sensed that it had been sealed for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years. And while this room was clearly built when the pillars were erected, oh. I knew that no human hand could have shaped this place, and that perhaps it had never been seen by human eyes. The surrounding murals depicted a winged race, their features so like my own, but beautiful, where mine were grotesque, and angelic, while mine were demonic. I tried to decipher these images. A great war but with combatants like none I had ever seen. The pillars raised by this winged race who thus defeated their adversaries. The winged beings again, writhing in agony, apparently afflicted with the same bloodthirst I had so recently suffered. And throughout the chamber, inscribed everywhere, images of the Reaver itself. Was this what Cain had urged me to discover? I wondered. Lies, Raziel. The Elder. <gasps> Whoa! Do not be deceived. Ah, my ancient benefactor. And I dared to hope we had parted ways forever. Your silence was refreshing. It lasted. <laughs> No doubt you have a conveniently inexpressible reason for your presence here. Do not be insolent, Raziel. I am eternally present here and everywhere, now and always. I am the still center of the turning wheel, the hub of this world's destiny. But perhaps not so omnipotent as you'd have me believe. Your hold on me appears to be tenuous. I no longer seem to need you, yet I'm guessing you still need me. This impudence is unworthy of you, Raziel. Do not forget that you have a task to fulfill here. You are indebted to me. Indebted? You would have me show gratitude for a gift I didn't ask to be bestowed. Do you forget that you forced me to inhabit this vile carcass? I restored you to yourself, Raziel. It was Cain who destroyed you. The very enemy you've just let slip through your grasp. Do not fail me, my servant. I serve no one. Not you, not Cain, and not your lackey Mobius. 
Mobius is my good servant. I have many. And if I tell Mobius that he's worshipping a giant squid, do you think his faith will falter? You have grown willful, Raziel. But beware. To embrace a serpent is to invite poison into your heart. Cain is a sinuous beast. He will seduce and deceive you. You pride yourself on your free will, yet you let that degenerate deter your resolve. I harbor no illusions about his integrity, nor anyone else's. In fact, I am beset by manipulation on all sides. I merely seek the truth. These are the fathomless truths, Raziel. The agony of birth and death and rebirth. This is the wheel of fate, the purifying cycle which sustains all life. Vampires are an abomination, a plague which leeches this land of its spiritual strength. They obstruct the flow of life and death. Their souls stagnate in their wretched corpses. But the wheel must turn. Death is inexorable and cannot be denied. Your destiny is irresistible, Raziel. You are my soul reaver, the scourge of the vampires, reaper of their apostate souls. Remain steadfast, end the vampire's parasitic curse, and restore Nazgoth. Cain's blood belongs on your hands. Cain indeed deserves to die for condemning me to this repugnant fall, but if and when I kill him, it will be for me alone to decide. Cain destroyed you without a flicker of remorse. He tore the soul from your noble corpse, and after you had served him faithfully for a thousand years, he discarded you in the abyss on a jealous whim. Remember your rage, Raziel. Let it guide your hand. I'm, I'm blown away. This is probably one of the strongest video game openings that I've played. Like, we're, like, not even an hour and a half in, and, like, everything that's just been, like, laid out before us, it's, it's just gourmet. Like, gourmet. And, oh... I didn't really need that cracking noise in my ears. Thank you very much. Um, just absolutely delectable. Uh, there is just so much going on here. We have so, I love that he's like everywhere I turn, I'm beset by manipulation. We've got Mobius doing his thing, Kane doing his thing. The elder is back and doing his thing. And he resides at the base of these pillars I thought we just walked in and entered the base of the pillars and then it continues even further down and the elder's tentacles are wrapped around it and he's got like so many like goat eyes and he's like and we're seeing like that we evolved with our wings at the beginning of Soul Reaver and Kane was like nope and and that's all the imagery that we're seeing here like the winged creature with the Soul Reaver like that's my, my future or I'm descended from that in ancestry I, like I don't know and then we can see what seems to be the pillars in the back there I think it's just it's so cool to look at and then I don't know if this is like what's ha I, yeah I'm trying to like interpret past present future it's all probably going to meld together in some way shape or form but these murals are amazing seeing the the soul reaver so deeply intertwined and the soul reaver correct me if i'm wrong was a missable weapon in blood omen right you collect the soul reaver and i remember getting that and being like oh shit like that's the name of one of the like that's the name of the game in one of this in the series and i picked that up being like okay let's see what happens and then it ends up being such a crucial thing. Like the Soul Reaver imagery is everywhere. Like it's it's in the save points. It's bound to us. It's in so many of these murals. It's it's incredible. Um, so we are like underneath the pillars that we've come to know above. I think 
this room that we're actually in, this is the sanctuary. This is the sanctuary of clans from the first game. Because I remember these symbols up the top. This is where Kane's throne was in the first Soul Reaver game. It's really interesting to be able to like place yourself. But then the elder was not underneath the the sanctuary. He was um, a little bit far removed. And we go. We can. We can go down here as well. Oh my god! Oh, it won't let me. I can't swim down. <laughs> Interesting. Oh yeah, I can. I can swim down. Dude. You can swim down here to him. Destroy Kane. I'm going to poke you in the eye. <laughs> oh, that's so creepy. Could you? Oh, we can go down here. I'm going to go to the save point, but imagine just like going for a swim and you just see a uh, giant squid with eyeballs. Holy shit. Amazing. Um, hang on. I need to get up. Please. Let me back up. Stop. Uh, I'm not sure what triggers the... I'm not sure what triggers the... Um, swimming back down again when you reach the top, but it bugs me. Oh, there we go. Alright, we'll do a save. And this is going to be where we bring our first episode of... Uh, Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver 2, to a close. Most definitely we need to bring this one to a close. Take a lovely little break there. Uh, because this is its just such an incredible start. I'm so happy with this game. It, it has exactly what I want out of Legacy of Cain. What, from what we've come to know of Blood Omen and Soul Reaver, it's, it's blending them together in such a satisfying way. Very pleased with it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Soul Reaver 2. Uh, so happy that I'm finally getting to this series and I can understand why people have been like, please play this, please play this, please play this for so long. And they're like, you're gonna love it, you're gonna love it. And all of those repeated like, please play the Legacy of Kane series has, it, it makes so much sense. Thank you so much to those of you that have recommended this series to me because it is just so incredibly enjoyable. And uh, I can't wait to see where this is gonna go. And it, it does make me happy that we do have a couple of other games still left in the series as well. So I'm, I'm in the middle of a feast. I just know that one day I'm going to finish the series and then I'm going to be miserable that this series doesn't have anything new happening with it. I already know that I'm going to be miserable, but I'm going to make the most of my happiness while I'm here. And hopefully I give uh, you Legacy of Kane fans um, something to enjoy about rediscovering this sort of series and this story through me as well, because I'm, I'm having a great time. So again, thank you so much for joining me today for this first episode of Soul Reaver 2, and I will see you next time.